Welcome to Kick Dragon Vids and today we have a special study called the sixth hour or the hour of temptation. Even as there was an hour of darkness right before Jesus died on the cross, there will be an hour of darkness right before the return of Jesus Christ at his second coming at the seventh trump. The sixth hour is symbolic and is connected to the hour of temptation right before the return of Christ at his second coming. The sixth hour in which Christ was delivered and right before he died on the cross represents the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth bow when Satan will rule as the Antichrist during the hour of temptation or the hour of darkness. For he is the prince of darkness and the power of darkness. In this video we will also document where Jesus connects this sixth hour with the mark or the number of the beast 666. Did Jesus ever mention the number of the beast? He did. And in this video we will document that. And uh, we will start with um, the book of Matthew chapter 27 where Jesus was at the cross. And it says here, and well, we'll start at verse 43 where he's, in, where he's on the cross already and it says, He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, even if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God, and he was the Son of God. And they will make fun of him, as it is written there in the book of Psalms 22, right? And verse 44 says, The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. And in verse 45 says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. So in, in the Hebrew calendar, or in the Hebrew sketch, I mean the Hebrew day or and night, oh well, the, the first hour was 7 a.m., the second hour was 8 a.m., and the third was 9, the fourth, 11 a.m., the fifth hour was 11 a.m., the sixth hour was 12 p.m. So from 12 p.m. all the way to 3 p.m., from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness in the world, and it was the middle of the day, you know. And why did it get dark? Well, I feel that God wanted to send us a message that right before Jesus died on the cross, there was an hour of darkness. Right, right when Jesus was delivered, well, right before Jesus returns, there were also there will also be an hour of darkness, which is the hour of temptation, in which Satan will rule as the Antichrist upon this world. And then it says, for so it was dark from. For whole three hours from, from midday or from 12 o'clock all the way to 3 o'clock, our 3 o'clock. And in verse 46 says, In about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, and that's perfect Hebrew, meaning my God, my God, because El is, a, is 14, H14 in your Strong's, means El, E as your your suffix. Um, my God and Lama, Lama is your, or La is your prefix, and Ma is a, uh, and then it says Shabbatani, which is um, Hebrew for, I mean, uh, Chaldean, which means, why has thou forsaken me? Shabbat means forsaken or left me alone. Ani, of course, means me. That is to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? You know, that's another subject for a different time. Yeah? The father did not forsake his son. Uh, you can read that in Psalm. He was just quoting Psalm 22. Okay, well, from there, we'll, we'll go to... Matthew 26, where, you know, we talk about this hour in which Christ was delivered, connected to the hour of temptation. And in verse 36 says, Then come to Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane. You know, Gethsemane is a compound word. The word je, je, uh, Jeth, or it's the word Gath, and the, of course the word Gethsemane means the oil press. And but it is a compound, a compound word which is the word gath. You got to break it up between two words. Gath is a Hebrew word which means the wine press. And of course, the wine press here symbolizes the wine press of the wrath of God, the the end time wine press. Here in Revelation chapter fourteen and verse verse nineteen, and the angel thrust in the sickle into the earth and gathered. The vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. So that's the end time wine press. And then the second word is uh, Shimon or Shemen, which is the word for Greece, 
that comes from the olive tree. So what do we have here? We have the oil and the wine. In other words, we're going to talk about the wrath of God, and we're going to talk about when Jesus died on the cross to give us his first cup, which is the cup of forgiveness uh, that made available his Holy Spirit or the oil. So here we have the wine and the oil, and we're going to talk about the two cups, the cup of the wrath of God and the cup of his forgiveness, his blood. It says, Then cometh Jesus when them into a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray yonder. Verse 37 says, And he took with him Peter and two sons, Zebedee, that's James and John, the sons of thunder, right? Mark 3, 17, Jesus calls them the sons of thunder. Why? Because thunder is symbolic of the word of God, as we read there in Revelation chapter 10, and also in uh, Revelation chapter 4. Verse 5, I think it is. Revelation chapter 10, verse 3 and 4, right? And it says, And he be and Jesus began to be sorrowful and very heavy. In other words, he was distressed. And verse 38 says, Then says unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tire you here and watch with me. See, Jesus, when he this hour of darkness that was about to approach to him and was coming upon him, he wanted his disciples to watch, even as he wants, even as he wants us to be watching. Always, the book of Revelation, chapter three, verse three says, "If therefore those shall not watch, I will come to you as a thief." Right. So he wants us to watch, even here in the book of Luke, chapter twelve, verse twenty-seven. It tells us here. It says, and thirty-seven says, "Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching." Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. So he wants us to be watching. Did his disciples, were his disciples able to watch? Well, let's see, verse 39 says, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, let, oh, father, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as though wilt. And of course, which cup was he talking about? Remember Gethsemane? It mentioned the wine press and the oil press. It mentioned the wine press, which reminds us of the wrath of God there in Revelation chapter 14. And it also talked, and it also reminds us of the oil press, in which, you know, I feel that Jesus, when, uh, here in verse 26, here in the book of Matthew 26, verse 26 says, I mean, verse 28, it says, I mean, verse 27 says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the many of the remission of sins. Was Jesus talking about that, that cup, the cup of forgiveness, the cup of his blood? You think he didn't want to give us his forgiveness? Of course he wanted to give us his forgiveness. You know, the Bible says there in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 18, that out of his will, he begat us, right, through his, by his word. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says that, For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Of course he wanted to die for us. Of course he wanted to give us forgiveness. And it says here, so he wasn't talking about that cup. Which cup was he talking about? The cup of the wrath of God. Because, because Jesus was denied, because Jesus was rejected and denied and crucified, now, his judgment had to come. In other words, now his wrath would have to come to this world because they didn't receive him as king the first time. So he's talking about the wrath of God that he doesn't really want to pour upon this world. And there you can find in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 25, verse 15, where it mentions that cup. Right, right, verse 12 says, And it shall come to pass when, uh, Jeremiah 25, verse 12, And it shall come to pass, when the seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and the nation, says the Lord, of their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make a perpetual desolation. And this is not talking about Nebuchadnezzar. This is talking about the true king of Babylon. Look, and I will bring upon the land all my words, which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book. See, the, when Nebuchadnezzar came, not all, not everything that was written in Jeremiah was 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 fulfilled. So we're talking about the end time. King of Babylon. 
said, Nebuchadnezzar was only a foreshadow, which Jeremiah had prophesied against all the nations. And look, look at verse 15, it says, For thus says the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine, the cup of his fury at my hand, and cause all nations to drink whom I send thee to drink. And even over here in, in the book of uh, the book of Revelation, in chapter 14, and I think in verse 8, it mentions it. It says, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen in the great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the, of the wrath of her fornication. And look at verse 10, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. So he's talking about that cup. That's the cup he really didn't want to pour upon the earth. Because they were going to reject him and crucify him. And verse 40 says, and he, in uh, Matthew 26, 40, And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and said unto, the, unto Peter, See, the word watch is in Hebrew, gregareo, which means to be awake, to be alert, to watch. And then here he comes, he comes, he wanted them to watch during that hour. Like he wants us to watch during during this time and, and also during the hour of temptation. And he tells them, What, could you not watch with me one hour? You know. And it says in verse 41, it says, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And this reminds me of the hour of temptation, which is written here in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep the word of stereo, which means to keep guard or by putting your by putting their uh, or from loss or injury properly by keeping the eye upon the word stereo 5083 in your in your strongs, right? It, it doesn't mean to fly you out of here or zap you out of here like in the rapture, no. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will guard, I will keep thee. Keep thee from injury, guard thee from injury, from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So we should be watching. You know, the Bible tells us there in the first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. It tells us to watch and, and be steadfast in the faith, you know, and uh, quit you like men, right? Praise God. And it says there in Colossians 4, 2, that uh, always, you know, be watchful with thanksgiving. Always. And a lot of people don't mention it, but, you know, the armor of God there in Ephesians chapter 6 doesn't have six parts. It has seven parts. They forget to mention the, the last part of the armor of God, which is very important. It means watching and praying, as it is written there in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. So watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed, indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 42 says, and we, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Again, do you think Jesus didn't want to give his forgiveness to this world? Do you think he, he said, this is my body, I mean, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sin. Do you think he was talking about that cup? No. Praise God. Even there, he's, you know, if you read the book of Luke, I think it is, that he even started sweating as sweats of blood. Even there, he started shedding the cup of blood, or the cup of his, uh, of his forgiveness. And verse 43 said, it meaning that he didn't really want to pour out the... That's why there's the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper, which represents the wrath of God and the cup of his forgiveness. And verse 43 says, And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. You know, don't be asleep. You know, awaken though that sleepeth among the dead. Right? Praise God. And God shall give thee light. Ephesians chapter 5, right? verse 14. And said, he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. Which hour? That sixth hour. The hour in which he was going to be delivered. The hour of darkness. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Right? Praise God. And of course, you know, that hour 
that hour in which he was going to be delivered into their hands, into the hands of the enemy, to the Canaanites, the sons of Cain, which are really the sons of the devil, and to Satan. And as it, is, as it is written here in the book of Luke, chapter 22, and in verse uh, 52 and 53, it says here in the book of Luke, chapter 22 and 53, it says, it says, when I was daily with you, well, we'll start in verse 42, it says, then Jesus said unto the chief priests and the captains and the temple and the elders which were come to him, you know, they were, they were going to take him already. And he said, but you come out as against a thief, you know, and thief is a, another name of Satan, you know, the thief coming out but to kill, destroy, to rob, kill, and destroy, but I came out to, to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. You know, and it's uh, kind of ironic that they would say this because the thief is the name of Satan. And in other words, you come to me like if I was Satan, you know, praise God. And they got it all wrong. The true Jesus, they're not they're not going to receive the true Jesus. But the false Jesus, Satan, they will receive him. That, and verse 53 says, I mean, as a thief with swords and slaves and staves. And verse 53 says, when I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth and know your hand. No, your no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. And of course, power of darkness is a na another name of Satan. You know, it says right here in the book of Acts, chapter 26, and verse 18, it says, To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from power of Satan. You see, darkness is the power of Satan. Un unto God which is light that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which were sanctified by faith that is in me and it is also written there in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this world praise God uh, and uh, against spiritual weakness in heavenly places or high places you know he is the ruler of darkness and Colossians 1.13 says that, that Jesus delivered us from the, from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. You know, praise God. And we're not of darkness, but we are the light, right? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5. He says, When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth not your hands, you know, against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Jesus turned it over at His own will. Like it's written there in John chapter 10, verse 18 says, No man taketh it away from me. You know, I take it, I take it, I take it, because, you know, as um, let, me, let me read it correctly here. Praise God. In John chapter 10, verse 18, it says, It says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down to myself, of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment I received of my Father. And uh, praise God, you know, and he did. He turned it over to, to them, to the Canaanites, as it is written there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, the ones that call themselves Jews and are not. And uh, from here, let's go to, you know, Jesus makes that connection from the hour which he was delivered, that hour of darkness, this power, this, uh, this hour and power of darkness, he makes the connection with the hour of temptation. The hour in which Satan will come and rule as the Antichrist right before the coming of Jesus. Here in the book of John, chapter 12. Let's check it out. The book of John and chapter 12. And it says, and I'm starting in verse 23. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come. Which hour? That sixth hour in which he was delivered. That the Son of Man should be glorified. And when was he glorified? When he was crucified. And died, and verse 24, Verily I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And yes, and Jesus had to die in order to bring much fruit, in order to save us, in order to bring salvation to the whole world, to whosoever believeth. Even you, you must die. The old man has to die in order to bring much fruit. Why? Because he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life and this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Verse 26 says, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. 
If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Verse 27. Now is my now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Save me from this sixth hour, from this hour of darkness. But for this cause came I unto this hour. And look at the way he connects the hour in which he was delivered, that hour of darkness, to the final, to that hour in which Satan will come as the Antichrist, that hour of darkness, the hour of temptation. Look, verse 28 says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. That was the father talking to his son. Praise God. Verse 29 says, The people therefore that stood by and heard it said, Then it thundered. You know, thunder is the symbolic of the voice of God. And others said, An angel spake to him. And verse 30 said, Jesus answered, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. It's God's word is for your sake. It's for you. It works for you. Verse 31 says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. You see, a lot of people say, Well, then, when, when, when Jesus died on the cross, that's when Satan was cast out. Because it says there, Now, this judgment. No. When Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't judgment. You know, the Bible even tells us there in John 3, 17, I didn't come to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Had his first coming wasn't for the, was a different cup. It was a cup of forgiveness. But his second cup will be the cup of the wrath of God. It will be his judgment. And right before his judgment, there will be another, another time of darkness, another hour, the sixth hour, in which Satan will come and ruled as the Antichrist, in which he will be cast out. Because they, they, de they denied him, because they rejected him, and they crucified him. Now shall there be judgment upon this world. And he says, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I will be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. You see how, how he was, how, how, as he died on the cross, and that six hour of darkness, you know, he's connecting it that same hour in which Satan will come and be cast out. You see the connection? Jesus made that connection. This he said, can to find what death he should die. Praise God. And look at uh, John 13, 1, it says, and he, he, Jesus mentions this hour a lot here in John. And here in John 13 says, Now before Jesus, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And he does love us unto the end. When did Jesus depart to his Father? Well, when he departed to the, when he died on the cross. Remember he said, Unto thy Father I commend my spirit. And remember from the last video, you know that from my, the my, the one that my wife, the one the one that my wife made the last time, talking about where Jesus went, he went to go preach to those that were in prison. For uh, First Peter chapter three verse eighteen, First Peter chapter four verse six, even uh, even uh, the book of Acts chapter two verse twenty seven and Acts two thirty one mentions it, uh, talking about uh, Psalm sixteen ten where where he where. Where it, it is prophesied where Jesus was, you, you did not leave my soul in hell. Neither did you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Right? Praise God. So that's when that, that hour came to him. That's when that hour of darkness. And look at, uh, I think from here, John 16 and, and verse um, 33. I mean, verse 32 says, Behold, the hour cometh. Talking about. Connecting the hour, you know, when he will, when he will be delivered to the last hour or the hour of, of temptation before Jesus comes to this world. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Documenting that the Father did not leave him alone, and during the hour of temptation, praise God. You know, Jesus was quoting scripture when he said, Eli, Eli, yama sabachthani, when he was at that cross. He was quoting Psalm 22. Have you read it? You know, the father did not leave his son, and neither 
you know, the promise that I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, the Lord will not leave us during the hour of temptation. A lot of people say, oh, the Holy Spirit is going to be gone. It's going to be taken away. No, 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 brothers, you know, it even says here in, in Daniel, you know, giving us the foreshadow here in Daniel, that hour, in Daniel chapter 3, if I could get there, um, praise God. And here in Daniel chapter 3, and, and he mentions that hour too. Uh, here in uh, 14 and 15, it says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? You know, uh, foreshadowing the image of the beast in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Now, if you be ready, that at what time do you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the segbut, the psaltery, and the ducimer, and all kinds of music? You know, and Satan also will use all kinds of pleasing things to deceive. You shall fall down and worship the image, and we're not going to bow down to it. You see, there's, a, there, there's another difference between the coming of Christ and the coming of Satan. You know, when Satan comes, not every knee shall bow, because I'm not going to bow to him. But when Jesus comes, every knee shall bow, and everybody will be transformed. And it says, And which I have made well, but if I worship not, you shall be cast the same hour. Which hour? That same hour, that hour of temptation. In the midst of the burning fiery furnace. That burning fire furnace represented the hour of temptation in which the church will be delivered in which we should not premeditate what we shall speak, for it will be given to us that hour what we shall speak. Right there in Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse um, 19, so on there. And it says, and look at verse 24, or verse 23 says, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselor, did not we cast out, cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, O true king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is likened unto the Son of God. Jesus was there with them. You see, how was how were the three Hebrews delivered from the fire furnace? Did Jesus come and zap them away? No, he was there with them. The Son of God was there with him. And the Son of God will be with us during that hour of temptation. You know, and it says here in verse, uh, and back to John 16, 33, it says, Behold, the hour cometh, yow, yet is now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own. Everybody left him except for his father. And shall leave me alone, yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. And verse 17 says, I mean, chapter 17, John 17, verse 1 says, these words speak, spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hours come, glorify the Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. That same hour, talking about the same hour he's going to be delivered. And look at John 19 and verse 14. And now, uh, talking about that hour in which he was delivered, the sixth hour, connecting it to the hour of temptation. John uh, 19, 14 says, And it was the preparation of the Passover, and remember, the Passover in Exodus chapter 12 and uh, verse uh, 23 where for the Lord will pass through the smite and smite the Egyptian and when he sees the blood upon the lintel foreshadowing the blood of Christ upon us unto the suit and to sight on on the two side post the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come unto your houses to smite you it is very important for you to have the blood of Christ for you to have it forgiven, for you to have the seal of God upon your forehead so that Satan will not harm you, the destroyer. You see, you notice how the death, the death angel was, was named the destroyer, Satan. Satan is the death. In verse 14, uh, back to uh, John 19, 14, and it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, he says unto the Jews, Behold, your king. And remember this act, sixth hour? They presented to the Jews, uh, because it was the custom of the, of the Jews to release a prisoner. And on one side was Barabbas, which means uh, son of the father. But then we have Jesus, the son of the true father. You know, foreshadowing, you know, that day, that sixth hour, where Satan will be here calling himself the son of the father, Barabbas. 
being the son of the father, would you be able to know the difference between the true son of the father and the one that calls himself the son of the father? It was by no it was no coincidence that Barabbas was named Barabbas, the son of the father. Praise God. Because we know that there's only one son of the true father. But as it is written, they denied the Holy One and just and desired a murder, murderer, the name of Satan, to be granted unto them. There in Acts chapter 3, verse 14. You know, before everything, you know, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, mention, you know, uh, this before, you know, I, I, I don't want to close this video before mentioning this. And this is probably something very important to you. You know, God does, Jesus did mention the number of the beasts. 666, six, six. he does. But, you know, when I was studying the hours, the, the Jewish hours, uh, you know, it, it, you know, God revealed to me, you know, this. And it, uh, well, I was able to see what Jesus was really telling us in the book of Mark, chapter 13. But let me give you a little, little, again, uh, remind you of, you know, in the Jewish uh, days started at 6, well, the Jewish night ended at 6 uh, a.m. And it started, so the first hour, uh, the day started right after that. So the first hour of the day would be 7 a.m., the second hour, 8, the third, 9 a.m., the fourth, 10 a.m., the fifth, 11 a.m., the sixth, 12 p.m., and then on and on until it reached the, the 12th hour, which was evening, even. At 6 o'clock p.m. And then that's when night started. So the first hour of the night will be 7. The second hour of the night will be 8. And so on. Third, 9. And so on and so on. The sixth hour will be in the midnight. And then plus. And then it will go on. The seventh hour will be 1 a.m. 8 will be R2 a.m. And, and then so on. Until 12 hour would be 6 a.m. Check out this. Let me read. Let me read of you. Let me read to you the book of Mark. And chapter 13 you know there's other scriptures that I wanted to mention about the hour of temptation but you know I, I really want to put this in here before we close the video it says here in the book of Mark chapter 13 verse 32 it says but of the day and the hour knoweth no man no not the angels which are in heaven neither the Son but the Father, we might not know the hour, but we know the, the you know, the season. You know, when the two witnesses are, are killed, you know, in Revelation chapter 11, and, you know, it pretty much tells us that Christ is going to come pretty soon after that. As a matter of fact, three days and a half after that. But it says in verse 33, Take ye heed, watch, and pray, for you know not when the time is. Verse Again, Jesus commands us to watch. You know, we're watching, we're supposed to watch. Remember Revelation chapter 4? I mean, Revelation chapter 3, verse 3? It says, therefore, those should not watch. I will come to you as a thief. You know, Jesus, uh, you know, they, they come with that any moment doctrine. Jesus can appear at any time. But Jesus debunks that. He says, if, therefore, those should not watch. If you should not watch. In other words, if you watch, if you watch Christ is not going to come to you as a thief. But if you're not watching as it is written there in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 3, it says, it says let me read it properly in the, uh, Revelation 4 and verse 3. I mean, 3 3, Revelation 3 3, forgive me. It says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, repent. And there, if therefore thou shall not watch, remember that big word in the Bible, if, if therefore thou shall not watch. I will come unto thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. When? When you're not watching. See, Jesus doesn't come as a thief in the night to everybody, only to those that are not watching, and to those that are asleep, as it is written here in 1 Thessalonians, and chapter 5, and verse, uh, I think it's 4, right? 1 Thessalonians, let's see if I can get there right quick. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, and verse 3, and then verse 4 says, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. See, we're not in darkness. That day is not going to take us as a thief because we're not in darkness. You are all, this says, you are all the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night 
nor are of the darkness. So Jesus is not going to come as a thief to everybody. Yes, it will be in a moment at the twinkle of light, at the last trump. As it is written there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. But he doesn't, he, doesn't, he can't appear at any time. Jesus comes right after Satan and he makes it very clear right here. Check out this, what verse 34 says. Take heed, watch and pray, for you not know when the time is. Verse 34 says, For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his, his work and commanded the porter to watch. He wants us to be watching. And verse 35 says, pay attention to this. It says, Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the, the master of the house cometh. That's Jesus. You don't know when the master of the, the the master cometh at even at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning you know midnight I mean uh, the evening what what time was the evening well the book of Matthew chapter 20 and you read the parable and you go along with the hours the day the first hour the, the was seven the second hour you know was was uh, was eight you know, third hour, nine, there in Matthew 20, and then you come to the 12th hour, which was even, which is our 6 o'clock p.m. So there we have the first six. Even was 6 o'clock p.m. Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, even at 6 o'clock, at even, which is 6 o'clock p.m., or at midnight. Of course, the sixth hour of night in the Jewish and the Jewish, you know, how they would do it back then, was midnight would be the sixth hour. So there we have the second six. The sixth hour was midnight. Or at the cock crowing. You know, and according to the Companion Bible and also in uh, other sources, the cock crowing was twice one at the third hour which was 12 to 3 a.m. and there was a second one which this one mentions the second hour here in appendix 51 in the, in the companion bible the cock crowing mark 13 35 there were two one after midnight and one before dawn meaning right before daybreak in other words right before daybreak will be six there we have the third six so we have Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at even, which is 6 o'clock p.m., at midnight, which is the sixth hour, or at the cock crowing at 6 a.m. Then we have three sixes. For you know not when the master cometh at even, 6, or at midnight, 6, or at the cock crowing, 6, or in the morning, the word morning in the Greek meant dawn or daybreak, which was would be 7 o'clock a.m. So what is Jesus telling us? Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at 6, or at 6, the hour, 6 hour, or at 6 a.m., the cock rowing, at 6, 6, 6, or at the morning, 7. In other words, he's, at, he's saying, does Jesus come at the 666 or does he come at 7? Praise God. And then you'll probably say, well, now nah, he's just playing with numbers. Well, there's no doubt that if you put even at 6 p.m., R6 p.m., even at 6, R6 p.m., and then you add 6, it would bring us to midnight. And then you would add another 6. It will bring you to 6 a.m. Again, he mentions the three sixes. Do you know when Christ comes? Does he come at 666? Six, 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 or does he come at 7? Representing the sixth trump, the sixth bow, and the sixth, the sixth seal when Satan shall be here ruling as the Antichrist. Or does Jesus return at the seven, meaning the seventh trump, the seventh seal, the seventh vow? Would you be able to tell the true Jesus 
Would you be able to, you don't know if it's the son of man or maybe it's Satan. Verse 30 says, Lest suddenly he find you sleeping like he like he saw like he found the disciples sleeping. And I say unto you, I say unto all. So Mark 13 is for everybody. <laughs> Watch. Praise God. Oh Senor. And of course, you know, there's other scriptures that mention the, the hour of temptation, you know, and I'm just gonna go ahead and mention a few. You know, Matthew 10, 19. It says, but when though they deliver you up, take no thought or what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you that same hour what you shall speak. And then we also find it here in the book of, uh, and uh, of course there in Revelation 3.10, here in Revelation we find it a, uh, a lot of times, here in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, because thou hast kept, the word of my patient, I will keep me to guard from loss or injury, from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And here in Revelation chapter um, 9, I think it is too, and it says, and um, verse 15 says, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, that hour of temptation, and a day and a month, and a year, for to Lay the third part of man. And then, of course, here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 12, talking about the ten kings that will come with Satan. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 12 says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which will come with Satan, which have received no kingdom as yet, because they come with Satan, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. See, talking about that same hour. And then, well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, you know, God bless you. And I hope you stay in God's word. And uh, be watching. You know, watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. You know, and uh, God bless you. We love you. And uh, we'll be praying for you. Pray for me. And uh, remember always, you know, uh, kick dragon. And thank you. God bless.